In 1921, the Schubert brothers pushed the Broadway district north to 49th Street and built the Ambassador Theater on an oddly shaped plot of land. Finding a design that made maximum use of the space presented the architect with a unique challenge. The architect, Herbert Krapp, who had designed many theaters in the district, actually twisted the auditorium inside the theater so that it's on an angle. It doesn't square up with the building itself. So there is a constant dialogue in New York between high art ambition and getting in that extra seat and selling that extra ticket. Musical comedies and operettas enjoyed success on the ambassador stage through the 1920s. Then came the Depression. In 1936, the Schuberts were forced to lease the theater for use as a movie house and later a radio and television studio. In 1956, it reopened as a legitimate theater. In 1976, the hit musical Godspell brought the ambassador a new audience. Godspell brings a kind of youthful energy to the theater. It tells the story of the gospel, and these kids take on different roles in acting the so-called good news of the Bible. After presenting several significant African-American works, in 1996, Bring into Noise, Bring into Funk, starring Savion Glover, became the Ambassador's biggest hit. This is when the Ambassador comes into its own. This is an amazing piece of work that looks at the sense of African American identity and how it has been constructed in contemporary culture. For one of the first times on Broadway, Moving lights were used by renowned lighting designer Jules Fisher. The lighting became another character. Rhythm, which is a component of lighting, as it is of music, was throughout the piece. So that besides the tap dancing having its own rhythm, so did the lighting. In 1999, a revival of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, long a staple of high school and amateur productions, introduced a rising star. The first day of rehearsal, I show up. The director, Michael Mayer, said to me, I'm going to let you make up your own part. And I said, how do you mean? Now, for those who, people who have never seen Charlie Brown, it's just the strips brought to life. And he said, you're going to pick your own strips that you want to do. Why are you telling me? I like it. That's a good philosophy. Why are you telling me? Why are you telling me? I read every strip that Charles Schultz had done about Sally Brown, and she kept saying, today my new philosophy is no. I like it. It's like a guarantee. My new philosophy. And things are sure to be a whole lot brighter. A few years later, in 2003, a pared-down version of the musical Chicago came to the ambassador. It would become one of the longest-running revivals in Broadway history. The original Chicago opened against Chorus Line in 1975 and was kind of forgotten in the Tony Awards with the great onslaught of Chorus Line. Razzle -dazzle and, they'll beg you for more. and then when the production of Chicago was redone at Encores at City Center, it became this huge hit and it was moved to Broadway by Fran and Barry Weisler. So, of course, we were enchanted and we couldn't wait to move it and reached out for capital to all of our friends, and lo and behold, nobody wanted to give us money. They felt it was too much a concert. They didn't get the style. And all that jazz. It was a performance-driven piece. We wound up putting a great deal of our own money into it, and it was like a miracle, a serendipitous moment in our lives. After years of struggle, The Ambassador has evolved into one of the most successful houses on Broadway, creating lasting memories for audiences and actors alike. For me, it was that it will never happen that way again. It was the first time I created a role on Broadway. I will take Sally with me till the day I die. <laughs>